most people, I think, have that feeling of some bit of spirit in them. There is some kind of, be it religion, formal religion, or be it belief in the fairies, or be it belief in charity, or be it a belief in... Because we're built that way. We're built that way. There is something that touches most people, if only you could find it. Be it only a, hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? you know, and I find even that. Salute a person on the street. And sometimes it frightens people. It frightens the living life in a person to be saluted. But sometimes it brings the most remarkable kind of a response. And pass on. It frightens some people, but, but other people, it brings a smile. A small thing. A small thing. I think ordinary people have their own way of remembering things, which is quite different than the official version of so many things. And the folklore version tends to be more lively, because what would I say the word for it is uh, official versions of things tend to be stuffy. They come out of books that are written uh, by official people. Um, reports tend never to be read, and I think they're never meant to be read. Whereas something that is directly from the people's mouth, you will read, you'll listen to, I, I do think. And uh, something that was around the fire at night, uh, um, was to be listened to, and that's why I have, uh, we'll say, in a book like Meeting the Other Crowd, the fairy book that I did, is exactly from the recordings that I made. And that's the reason why it's already in its 14th edition. I let the people tell their own stories as they told them, in their own words. That's what people like. When God was in his heaven, sitting in his golden chair, all the angels and archangels and thrones and dominions and all the other kinds of uh, people that were in heaven, all they had to do was adore him. Bow down, bow down and adore him. A good pensionable job and likely to last forever. But there was one of those archangels, the bright one, Lucifer and he was watching and he was watching all the time and he was wondering what would it be like to be up there in the golden chair looking down at where we are here hmm. and he watched God because God was like everybody else you see he had to go out to the <coughs> the back place occasionally uh, as they call it in Connemara and Lucifer was watching this and waiting his chance and plucking up courage all the time. And one of the times that God was gone out the back place, uh, Lucifer jumped up into the chair, uh, the golden chair, and, ah, isn't this the place to be? Because whoever was in the golden chair, the crowd below, ah, adored and adored and adored, and here they were now adoring Lucifer himself wonderful feeling but he had forgotten one thing because like a lot of smart people that have one little kink he had forgotten that God would be coming back <laughs> and when God came back in the back door pulling up his trousers <sighs> after being at the place outside and when he came in and saw who was in his chair he lost his temper entirely and what to do? Only open the floor of heaven, open the floor of heaven, and down went everybody who was there, and not just them, but the golden chair and Lucifer in it. Because remember, gold is very heavy. Down it went, and Lucifer, ah, down, 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 and down went the ones who were adoring him in their thousands, like the stars of heaven. But luckily, for, for, for most of the ones in the background, and for us too, maybe, <laughs> Michael the Archangel 
He was over in the corner, standing on a rafter, making the tea. <laughs> and he saw what was happening, and he said to God, Master, Master, he says, do something quick, quick, or we'll be alone here in heaven. And God saw that he was right, and he immediately <laughs> closed the floor of heaven again. And, and, <sighs> Michael, <sighs> thank you, Master, he said. <clears throat> but, of course, for the ones that were falling, 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 it was too late. And especially <laughs> Lucifer uh, and the chair, by then down, down they had fallen into the dark place, into the pit uh, where they are to this very day. And the ones that were nearest to him, and they today are the devils. And he is the devil, the dark one. But when God <coughs> Close the floor of heaven. When the ones that were already falling, they froze where they were. And the ones that had fallen to earth, they stayed there. And they today are the earth fairies. The ones that you'll find in the forts, the fairy forts. And the ones that had fallen into water are the water fairies. You'll find them in the rivers, the seas, the lakes, and the ones that are st were still falling through the air of the air fairies. And that's how our ancestors distinguished between the three types of fairies, the earth fairies, the water fairies, the air fairies. And it will just show you, even though they weren't bookish people, because they hadn't books, they had books. I don't remember it was a very, very poor country. Who had books at that time except maybe the clergy or maybe the, the lawyers or maybe people like that, learned people. Ordinary people had no books, but they had curious minds when they were talking around the fire at night. They wanted to know things like this. And that was their answer for how the fairies, in their varying degrees, came to be. And the other great thing I always found about Irish people was they had a sense of humour about their own religion. They had a sense of humour about God going to the toilet. <laughs> if around the world today, when you have so many wars about religion and people killing each other about religion, people had that sense of humour about religion. Wouldn't it be a wonderful, wonderful thing? Irish people did have that long ago, and we should give them great, great credit for that. And when I'm listening to old people today, as I have been doing for the last 43 years, I have often listened to them, and I have thought, well, isn't it, isn't it a gift? Isn't it a gift to be able to laugh at very, very serious philosophical things and still believe thoroughly in those same philosophical things. I think when those people turn up at the gates of heaven, they'll get a, a welcome. Come in and you'll meet the man himself and you'll meet the boys like St. Peter and you'll meet the Archangel Gabriel and you'll meet Michael, the man who was making the tea above and thereafter, and I'll bet he'll have a cup for you. But the notion of Michael the Archangel making tea above on the rafter in heaven. <laughs> when you consider tea was only introduced to Ireland in the 19th century, you know, it's, it's such a wonderful notion. It's, I think, that those stories, they're, they're a gift to humanity. There are two versions of how the fairies came to be. The, that story there, and the story of the Tuhide Danan. The Tuhide Danan would be, I suppose, the official version of the fairies being defeated in the Second Battle of Maithara and having to retreat underground. You would have to read about it in order to find out it's not so convincing. It's not so convincing. Whereas this one mightn't be convincing either, but it's mighty amusing. Uh, it's, it's the kind of story that, sitting around the fire at night, 
it was always a competition. There's my story. Tell one better than that if you can. That was the way when stories were stories and there was an audience for storytelling around the fire at night. When you had to do something, when there was no television, you had to be able to do something. There was always this notion of, is come no muck far gun scale. And then without the stories of no more account than a pig. If you went into a house at night and you couldn't do something, tell a story, sing a song, recite, play a tune, dance a step. As one old man put it for me, you'd be caught by the scruff of the neck and the hasp of the ass and out the door. You were useless. You were only taking up space. You were only using up good air. Get out. Go home. And that was the truth. <laughs>